the Queen is dead. Long live the King. Of course, there are a few people in the world now who will not be aware that Queen Elizabeth II has died. Britain's longest reigning monarch, 70 years. Remarkable. I want to read two verses from Scripture, from the Bible. Uh, 2 Chronicles chapter 16 and verse, verses 13 and 14. This is about the death of King Asa, who was a much-loved king. And Asa slept with his fathers and died in the one and fortieth year of his reign. And they buried him in his own sepulchres, which he had made for himself in the city of David, and laid him in a, the bed which was filled with sweet odours and diverse kinds of spices prepared by the apothecary's art, and they made a very great burning for him. That they made a great burning for him was a sign that they loved him, that he was a good king. We know that he was a king who feared God. We know that he was a king who loved the scriptures. And uh, although he was flawed, we know that he followed God. He followed the Lord Jesus Christ as an Old Testament saint. And they made a great burning for him. That was the people's way of showing that they loved the king. And that the passing of the king was something of extreme importance to them. For the next king might not be so kind or so um, Christian. And I believe that... The nation, the nation in which I live is going to make a great burning or the equivalent of a great burning for the death of Queen Elizabeth. What a remarkable woman. There's no question about that. My own feelings when I heard of Queen Elizabeth's death yesterday afternoon were profound sorrow. I couldn't shake them. I felt like I'd lost a member of my own family. I couldn't hold back the tears. And... I felt that an era has passed, something extraordinary, something astonishing had happened in the death of Queen Elizabeth. She'd always been there throughout life. When I was a primary school child and later in, on into young adulthood, the Queen was revered. We learned about her. We studied the royal family. We were taught to respect them. We were taught that they were extraordinary people and worthy of our um, fondest respect in all things. And the passing of the Queen is a great sadness, I think, for the nation. I don't think anybody would deny that the Queen, Queen Elizabeth II, was a, a woman of the greatest calibre and a remarkable person. And I'm not going to go into her failings, conspiracy theories, things like that in this discussion, simply to say that I believe that it is a genuine sorrow for this nation. I mean, even here in Hull, things have gone so quiet today. People up and down the nation, no doubt, feeling great sorrow in their hearts. I never knew the Queen, I never met the Queen. But even so, I can only say that this is, a, this is a woman who has had a profound impact on my own life, throughout my life. She's always been the Queen. And somebody who has conducted herself in public, everybody agrees, in public in an exemplary manner, setting an example. So I'm very sad and very sorry to hear of the death of Queen Elizabeth II. So the question is, and people will be asking, Christians especially will be asking, was Queen Elizabeth II, was she a Christian? Was this woman a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ? She took the title of the head of the Church of England. Now, this was a title that uh, came upon the British monarchy during the reign of Henry VIII when there was a split with the Church of Rome. But... While it's not a good thing to take such a title because Jesus Christ is the head of his church, there were times when the Queen behaved decidedly like a Christian. And in some of her, for example, Christmas Day messages, she delivered more of a gospel message than some archbishops of Canterbury ever did in their entire lives. I know Christians who believe that the Queen was a Christian and that the evidence supports this. And my hope, of course, is that that was true, that the reason for her extraordinary ability to um, present herself in public in a way that was great, let's call it great, was due to self-control wrought by the Holy Spirit in her heart. I, I hope so, because death is a great leveller. Kings and paupers will stand before the throne of Jesus Christ. And when they stand before that throne, there will be a level. 
queens and kings must be judged just as everybody else is judged. We won't be judged on our greatness in this world, we'll be judged on the, on, by, by the Ten Commandments, and more especially by what we do with Jesus Christ. What did the Queen do with Jesus Christ? I hope she was a Christian. I think there is some evidence that she was a Christian. Of course, I don't have all of the evidence. I don't have all of the evidence. Being the head of a church, an organisation, doesn't make you a Christian. It's knowing Jesus Christ that makes you a Christian. I hope the Queen was a Christian. I remember one, I remember one uh, Christmas Day message from the Queen when she read from the Gospel of John, and it was really powerful to the nation about what Jesus had done. Maybe, oh, I hope she was a Christian. But then the Queen also had other things, and these have to be mentioned, and it's not that I wish to tarnish anyone's reputation. I have great respect for the memory of the Queen. But she also, as the head of state, had to sign off laws. And as the head of state, she signed off laws which no Christian could sign in good conscience. In 1967, the, the law which brought in liberal abortion and the shedding of great amounts of innocent blood in the nation. And then more recently, signing off the law for same-sex marriage, which is not marriage according to the Church of England, and neither is it marriage according to God or according to the Bible. No one is obliged to sign such acts. People will say, well, she's the Queen, she had to. But somebody who can sign something also has the ability to refuse to sign something, even if it costs. And to sign into law such laws is to stand against God. I hope, I really hope that the Queen was a Christian. I really hope she was a Christian. But her loss is a great loss to the nation. And, well, we just, uh, the whole country no doubt is in shock and we need to, uh, as a country, we'll move forward and as, as a nation and as people, we'll move forward. But it, it's, so, it's such a different situation now. The Queen's death has changed so many things in our land overnight. We have a new king, King Charles III. Some years ago, Charles said he didn't want to be called King Charles because Charles was such a terrible name for kings. We had King Charles I and King Charles II, who were the inveterate persecutors of God's people. We trust that King Charles III will not be the persecutor of God's people. Charles has said, and there were Christians who said that Charles would never become king because he has said that he did not wish to become the defender of the faith, the faith, T-H-E, the, but the defender of faith. Charles being eclectic, Charles being well known for his rapprochement with Islam. When the Queen was enthroned, she swore with her right hand on the Bible to uphold to the utmost of her power the Protestant Christian religion. Will Charles do the same? Can he do the same if he does not believe that Christianity is the only way back to God, that Jesus Christ is the only saviour of the world, that the Bible is the only word of God, and that he has a duty and a responsibility before God as the head of state to uphold that Bible, to uphold that word? It'll be interesting to see what happens because what we find is that um, what might happen, I suppose, is that either he will do it with no sincerity whatsoever or he will not do it, which will be a change to the Constitution, no doubt, a significant change to our Constitution as a nation, away from a nation with a, a formal uh, recognition of Christianity as a national um, religion to uh, a, a nation who knows where, who knows what. And it's just possible, because we've seen it done before, that the Constitution will be changed, overwritten, ignored, forgotten, trashed or crushed for the simple reason that it should be done and nobody will say anything about it. We pray that God would give us a king who not only puts his right hand on the Bible and swears to uphold the Protestant Christian religion, but one who actually does that as well.
And of course, we should pray for King Charles. We should pray for King Charles because we're enjoined in Scripture to pray for kings and monarchs and those who rule over us. We should pray for him that he finds Jesus Christ. We should pray for him that he loves the truth. We should pray for him that he cherishes the Bible. We should pray for him that he, like his mother, sets an example to the nation. Even in <clears throat> the Old Testament here, reading about Old Testament kings like godly King Asa, for whom there was a great burning, we discover that the difference between a godly king ruling in Judah and an ungodly king in, ruling in Judah was an incredible difference. One king would bring the people back to God and they would worship God and the temple worship would be set up and uh, God's wrath would be appeased and the nation would flourish and prosper and people would find salvation. Another king would shut the doors of the temple, would bring idols and build temples to idols, would bring in Baal worship even and provoke the wrath of Almighty God even to the point and shed much innocent blood even to the point of the destruction of the nation. Now people will say, that our rulers, our governors, our kings and queens are merely administrative heads. We've already said that, that they have to sign off laws, but they are responsible for what they sign. That Charles won't be making political statements, although he has already made many political statements. That Charles won't be um, directing the nation, has no real power. The Prime Minister visits the monarch once a week. It is believed that the monarchy has more power over government than we perhaps are aware or think. And that's without even going into conspiracy theories. So what kind of king we get now, what kind of monarch we get now, will affect the course of the whole nation. If we don't have strong leadership as we've had under Queen Elizabeth II, or if we have wavering leadership, or if we have... Um, uh, leadership that is um, against the gospel of Jesus Christ, it will show and it will affect our nation. I rather fear that now that Queen Elizabeth has gone, we will see a much increased rate of decline in our nation, of turning to other religions, of forsaking God, of adopting idolatry, of falling into sexual immorality and all of these things that we'll find out that Queen Elizabeth II was a tremendous, even though she was said to be just an administrative head, she has been a tremendous force for holding back evil in the nation. If we don't believe that, I think we'll see what the removal of Queen Elizabeth is. Of course, it's not unnatural for a 96-year-old person to die, but at the same time, this also is a passing of God's judgments upon our land. Now we know that the World Economic Fellowship is fellowship. The World Economic um, WF are trying to um, <clears throat> take us over, and they're having tremendous success in Holland, in Canada, in other places. They've had tremendous success in the British government controlling our government, and we also know that um, their objection objective is to bring about a great reset. Charles the Third is the one who first announced the Great Reset during the lockdowns at the World Economic Forum's meetings. This can be found on the internet. The question is, will Charles' leadership, will his kingship be a kingship for bringing in the principles of the World Economic Forum? That would certainly be um, a great judgment and a great terror on our nation. We must pray for Charles. We must pray for Charles, who has been said to be the longest serving apprentice in history. But we must pray for him. Now that he is our king, we must pray for him. We must lift him up before God and we must cry out to God that he would give us godly, holy, sanctified rulers to rule over us and raise up men and women, including our new prime minister, to stand up against the tide of evil and speak up for what's good and righteous in the land. Now, there's a certain feeling, I think, how could Queen Elizabeth die? We've lived with her all our lives. How could she die? There's such a sense of loss. Now, I mentioned the 1967 Act and I mentioned the Same-Sex Marriage Act. And it's we've seen in the last few years terrible things happen with the royal family. We've seen all kinds of rifts and splits and immoralities and failures and divorces and troubles and problems. 
And I have to ask, is it that these troubles and problems came on the royal family because of the signing of these acts? I'm going to express my opinion. My opinion is that it did. The Lord has been chastening the royal family, chastening the royal family for not upholding the Protestant Christian religion, which they swore to do on the Bible, before the nation, before the world. We have to see what happens to our royal family in the United Kingdom here, in England here. We have to see what happens to the United Kingdom. That itself is about under pressure to fall to pieces. All of these being the judgments of God and the people not realising it or understanding it or even caring about it. If Prince Charles does well, then the Lord will bless him, bless the royal family, bless the royal household. But if he forsakes God, then how can he forsake the judgments of God? The same is true for us all. If we forsake God, he judges us in our households, in our families. If we follow the Lord, whatever happens to us, God is with us. The Lord Jesus is with us and he's our saviour. We mustn't assume, of course, that just because things go wrong in our families, that that means that God is judging us. If we are Christians, God chastens us. But there's somebody who will say, well, terrible things have happened to me. Am I to assume that I'm under the wrath of God? Examine yourself and see that you're in the faith. See that you're in the Lord Jesus Christ. See that you're walking with him. Some of these things are not chastisements or judgments. Some of these things are persecutions for righteousness sake. And in the world we have tribulation as Christians. But I'm expressing the strongly held opinion that the things that have happened in the royal family, the things that are being exposed, the opposition that is being raised up, are the judgments of God upon a family that has forsaken the Protestant Christian religion. Now death is a great leveller, <clears throat> as we've said. Queen Elizabeth must stand before judgment just as we must all stand before judgment. And on that day the only way we can be saved is if our name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. And my hope is, not my prayer because we can't pray for the dead, my hope is that her name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, that she's saved despite her failings. Asa had failings. Despite her failings, Queen Elizabeth II would be found to have her name written in the Lamb's Book of Life because she had faith in Jesus Christ. Death is the great leveller. When the Lord Jesus died, his disciples were distraught. When the Lord Jesus Christ died, his disciples said, how could that happen? He's supposed to be the Jewish Messiah. There were views in Israel that the Messiah would come in and bring in an earthly kingdom, a military kingdom, a powerful kingdom to overthrow the Romans and restore the Jews. And they wondered when Jesus died, their sense of loss. But <clears throat> Jesus Christ rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is alive today. <clears throat> we who are Christians today know that Jesus is alive. We celebrate his, his dying for our sins and we celebrate his resurrection for our justification. The Lord Jesus Christ is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Nobody can bring Queen Elizabeth back. Nobody can be saved by Queen Elizabeth. But Jesus Christ is alive today and he will save you from your sin if you believe on him. Jesus conquered and triumphed and conquered death and triumphed over the grave. The Lord Jesus Christ is the righteous one. He is the saviour of the world. And the nation that turns to him and the monarch that turns to him and follows him has that wisdom which comes from God. Now when Asa died there was a great burning for him. When Asa died there was must no doubt great mourning and great distress in the city because of his death, because a good man had perished in Israel. And now a good woman has died in the United Kingdom, a remarkable woman a great woman and no doubt the people of the United Kingdom will raise a great burning in her honour. Father we thank you for the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. Father we thank you for such a monarch to be the head of our state and Father we pray for the new king Charles III, that you would have mercy upon him, Lord. We have watched him in the media for so long, Lord, and he doesn't seem to know the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He doesn't seem to know the right way, Lord. He doesn't seem to know how salvation is wrought through faith in Jesus Christ alone, your Son, Father. And we pray for King Charles, Lord. Oh, Lord, awaken him now. Awaken his wife, Camilla. Have mercy upon them, Lord. Have mercy upon them and turn their hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, bring them to repentance. That, might, that they might even lead the nation in repentance, Lord. We pray, Lord, that if Prince, if King Charles cannot put his hand on the Bible and swear to uphold the Protestant Christian religion with all his might, that he would not do so, Lord. But yet we pray for the deliverance of this whole nation, Lord, from your wrath and from your anger. We ask, Father, that you would have mercy upon this nation. We ask that there would be repentance, Lord. People wouldn't be looking to earthly monarchs, living or dead, Lord, for succour, but come to the true and living God through your Son, Jesus Christ. We pray, Lord, that there would be an awakening, Lord. We see the encroachments of globalisation and the enslavement of us all, Lord, which is planned, Lord. And yet, Father, who he that is freed by the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lord's free, ma free man and thank you Father that when we know Jesus Christ whatever happens in this world we are free that our spirits can soar into the heavenless worshipping you, seeking you fellowshipping with you, glorifying you delighting in you and honouring you and we pray that Jesus Christ would be all in all not only to ourselves but to this nation in which we live and to the nations of the world Lord we pray that you give us godly rulers to rule over us here in the United Kingdom. We pray for the new Prime Minister, that she and her team, Lord, would <clears throat> not only make laws which are in accordance with your laws and change those laws which have brought about your wrath upon the nation, the abortion law, the change in marriage to same-sex marriage, Lord, which is against your law, which is against your word, which is an abomination in your eyes. But we pray, Father, that they themselves also would speak up for and speak out for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we pray, Lord, that uh, in this nation in which we live, many Muslims would find the Lord Jesus Christ to be the Son of God and the Saviour of the world. We pray, Father, therefore, that you'd have mercy upon our rulers, upon our leaders. Oh, Lord, the royal family torn apart by so much corruption, Lord, publicly displayed so much bitterness, so much strife, Lord. We pray, Lord, again, that there would be a revival within the royal family. And if there is in the royal family a Christian influence, Lord, a Christian member of the royal family, as I believe there is, I pray that your blessing would be upon that individual, Lord. I pray that the influence of that individual would extend to the whole family, Lord. And I pray, Father, that she would know your blessing, your help and your strength at this time, and I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would um, that you would bring that family to public repentance, that they would lead the nation in setting an example of humbling themselves before God, and, oh, Lord, that they might set an example of rejoicing in the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we pray for King Charles. Lord, we pray that King Charles would uphold the Constitution, we pray, Lord, that he would uphold the word of God. We pray that you'd have mercy upon him. And we pray, Lord, that you'd open his eyes to the emptiness of the things he has formerly taught and espoused. And show him the truth. Show him the depths and the riches and the heights and the lengths and the breadths of the love of Jesus Christ found in, the, in his cross, in his death for sinners, Lord. And oh, that Charles would desire that more than all things, Father. Have mercy upon us as a nation. Have mercy upon your people in this land. Revive your churches, Lord. Pour out your spirit upon us and anoint us to pray, Lord, to intercede, to cry out, to seek you, to love you, and to follow you. And these things we ask and pray. Oh, Father, we ask and pray that Jesus would be glorified in our hearts and lives. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.